Another Imperial video I hear you say. Well, here it is. Here are five things I wish I knew before I started studying at Imperial College London. Hi, my name's Devon, I'm a fourth year medical student at Imperial College London. Welcome back to my channel, I make videos about student lifestyle, medicine and tech. And so if any of that interests you, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. Now before I get started with this video, another video you guys might be interested in is my Boston Imperial Miss video, which I will link over there and also in the description. It's quite a useful video if you guys are applying to Imperial, just like this one would be. And some of you guys who have already applied and are receiving your accommodation letters right now, confirmations, all that stuff. If you guys want to find out more about Imperial accommodation, such as Woodward, Bite Hall and all the other ones, I will link all the videos that I made in the description down below as well. So make sure you go check that out. Now, as I said before, this video is going to be all about me going over some things that I wish I knew about Imperial College London before I started studying there. And I had these like weird thoughts and like expectations of what Imperial was going to be like and I know that if someone had told me these things before I actually went there it would have made the wait to start studying there a whole lot easier and would have just relaxed me a little bit. So the main audience for this video is going to be people who are looking to apply at Imperial in the next you know, few years or whatever and people who are literally starting within a month's time of making this video. So that's the main aim just to make you guys feel more at ease and with that said I hope you guys do enjoy let's jump straight into the video. Numero uno you will find your people I feel like whenever people hear about Imperial, they just start thinking that everyone's a bunch of nerds with a boring personality and there's no social life, it's just work, work, work for them, they don't go out and that you won't get along with them. But it's really not the case. I feel like Imperial's just like any other university, with a range of different people, different personalities, different interests, and a great place to find people with the same interests as you is clubs and societies. I mean, that's why it was made. And if you go there, you will definitely make friends for a lifetime. Now I know that moving out can be quite difficult and daunting, I mean it's a reasonable worry to have, you know, if someone's going to like you, if you'll get along, if you form that tight knit community that we all want to have, but if it's a worry of yours then it shouldn't be the case if you're applying to Imperial. Now the next one's a bit of a deep one, but it is that you deserve to be at Imperial. I always used to think about this, am I smart enough to be at Imperial, do I deserve to be here, how did I get in, was I just lucky, but the reality is you passed a whole lot of steps of the application process to get to where you are today, and qualified people at Imperial thought that you deserved a place at Imperial, and that's gonna mean something. Now obviously they might have made a mistake, but like, chances are quite slim realistically. I think the reason people think this is because of the reputation that Imperial has, that everyone's like a, a Nobel Prize winner at the age of 14, but let me tell you something. <laughs> they haven't. London is big, but not big big. The way they portray it is just that London is a huge place and you're a tiny little fish and you're not going to form that tight knit community because no one cares about you, you're going to be all alone in that. But once again, it's not the case. There are societies, friends, flatmates, all these people who are on the same boat as you, who will take care of you. So who says you have to explore London? You know, why not stick to student friendly places like South Kensington or North Acton or Hammersmith? You know, you don't have to explore the deep dark depths of East London to form these communities. Here's a little bonus thing, snake levels aren't actually as high as you think they are, like I was one of those that I was really worried if my snakiness levels would be able to you know exceed the perceived levels of snakiness that Imperial has but trust me it's not something you have to worry about, snaky levels aren't actually that high they're like respectable so even if you're like a little bit snaky you'll be fine so don't don't worry about that like it's, it's an alright thing. Also, if you're enjoying the video so far, make sure you drop a like down below and let me know that you're loving the video. It's not all just study, study, study. Now, I've covered this topic in a few videos, but that was more directed towards medicine and not Imperial as a, as a university. So this time I'm going to be talking more about that. Now, there's no denying that workload at Imperial is quite, quite high. And I know I had this thought before I got into Imperial that it's going to be so high that I wouldn't have time for extracurriculars. But um, it's not 100% true because what I learned at university is it's more about creating time and making time for all these extracurriculars it's not going to be provided for you and this is something i talked about in my tips for first year medical students video which i will link over there in the description so check that out if you want more information but the general gist of that video was about you know time's not going to be created for you they're going to give you so much workload and you're going to either drag yourself down with it or get your time management right where you can make time for extracurriculars but also get that workload done and it's very highly dependent on the person themselves to make this time you know, for, for themselves to, to have. The final thing I'm going to mention was not necessarily an issue for me, but I can see why it could be a potentially intimidating thing from a girl, and this point did come from a girl, and that is that you could end up living in a corridor that has only guys. This may or may not be an issue, but it's definitely something to take note of. 
Now that I think about it, in my corridor there was only one girl, and uh, talking to these girls about it, like, they didn't have an issue per se, but they just said they would have been nice to have another girl around just to talk about girl stuff and all that. Just so they wouldn't feel, like, left out, you know, with the guys, with the boys. But then again, you could probably just go to the next corridor and the girls are probably going to be there, or you can always have friends around all the time, you know. So it's not really that much of an issue, but it's just, again, something you should take note of. And uh, if you have any guy issues, obviously there's, like, tons of guys, the boys, you can always ask them for advice and they'll happily help you out. And that's been it for the video, I hope you guys enjoyed, make sure you like, comment and subscribe, I've been Devify, and I'm out.